Let's be honest, everybody thinks that they're right about the existence of God. And today, I want you to ask yourself two questions. Then I'm going to tell you a story that I want to get your reaction to. And then I'm going to come back to the two questions. The first question is, in your experience with everything you've observed in your life, have you ever seen something come from nothing? And the second question is, in your life with everything that you've observed, have you ever seen something or read of a scientific experiment where you have seen something that is alive come from something that is not alive? With those questions in mind, let's start our story. Ah, it was January of 2016. It was an exciting time. The United States presidential election was almost in full swing. Brazil was getting ready for the Olympics. And most importantly, the Powerball lottery was sitting at over $1 billion and the country had lottery fever. Everybody who was anybody was buying lottery tickets. And it was during this month that this happened. A woman by the name of Cinnamon Nicole launched a GoFundMe page claiming that she and her family had spent all of their savings on lottery tickets, trying to win the $1.5 billion lottery jackpot. Yep, you heard that right all of their life savings on lottery tickets. Well, the GoFundMe page was quickly taken down and Cinnamon Nicole said that it was just a joke. But I want you to think about something for a few seconds. If it wasn't a joke, how do you feel about a decision to spend all of your life savings on lottery tickets? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, now that you had a moment to think about it, I want you to think of one word to describe that decision. If you're anything like the people that I've talked to, then the words ridiculous, irresponsible, and silly come to mind. But my personal favorite is illogical. But why do we all feel that way? And how can this help us figure out the bigger questions in life? Like, does God exist? We're going to find that out today. And we're going to start with this gentleman right here. This is Bill Nye the Science Guy. He became famous in the early 1990s by hosting a half an hour live action science program on PBS. Since that time, he's traveled the world teaching science and battling what he sees as the forces of evil, namely creationists. In 2014, he debated one of the thorns in his side, the creationist Ken Ham, who was the founder of Answers in Genesis, an organization that promotes the idea of intelligent design. And they have become even more popular recently for building a museum Museum that also serves as a replica of Noah's Ark. Bill Nye showed up there too and talked to Ken Ham. Now, back to Cinnamon Nicole, the lottery, and the meaning of life. In an interview with the organization Big Think, Bill Nye was asked if it was rational to play the lottery. And you know what? That's a great question. Based on the odds, is playing the lottery rational? And you know what an even better question is? Based on the odds, is it more rational to believe that there is a God or that there is no God? Well, Bill Nye's answer to the lottery question is going to help us figure out the answer to both of those questions. So here is Bill Nye's answer about playing the lottery. And there was a lottery. There is a lottery. And I used to think it was kind of charming. If people wanted to play the lottery, okay, you know, that'll be fun for them. The chances of winning are very, very small, extraordinarily small. Almost everyone who ever plays ever loses. And I used to think it was benign or not any big deal, but I have changed my mind about that over the last 30 years. The lottery is mostly a tax on people who don't know math. And the reason they don't know math is because people like me have failed to enlighten people on what it really means when it's one in 230 million. It means you will lose. That's what it means. If you have a one in 230 million chance of winning, it means you will lose. So uh, my advice to you is don't play the lottery. Use your dollars for something else. So Bill Nye says that people who play the lottery play it because they don't know math. And that if they knew the math, they would not choose to play, let alone spend all of their family's savings on lottery tickets. You know what? Now that I think about it, he's right. The chances of winning the lottery are 1 in 292 million. And this is why you felt the way you did about Cinnamon Nicole. You knew that the chances of her winning, even if she bought, let's say, $1,000 worth of lottery tickets, was still 1 in 292,000. Sure, that's better than the standard 1 in 292 million. But still, the odds of winning were entirely too low to take that chance and spend all of your life savings. And without even really thinking about it, you did that math in your head and you realized this. Even though the value of winning was high, AKA $1.5 billion, the probability of winning was too low. 
and for the life savings cost of lottery tickets, the risk was too high. Value, probability, and risk. This is what you should use when you're making a choice to play the lottery or the choice for whether or not you believe that God exists. And keeping these things in mind, Cinnamon Nicole's decision was, let's just say, not the best. Now, what if we were to apply this thinking to the question of the existence of God? Could we take Bill Nye's advice to follow the numbers, to follow the probability, based on which is more likely, that God exists or that no gods exist? Remember, Bill Nye said this. The lottery is mostly a tax on people who don't know math. With that thought in mind, we already know that the odds of winning the lottery are 1 in 292 million. So, what are the odds of life beginning on its own without a God? This is the question that many scientists ask themselves every day, and it was kind of answered in this scientific article from Space.com. The article is simply named, New Equation Tallies Odds of Life Beginning. And in this article, they compare the chances of life developing on its own as a game. It says, we might have to wait 100 million years for it to fall into place, just in a test tube. Whereas on a planet scale, you've got a trillion test tubes, probably even more than that. It's conceivable that using this equation, playing these games, is hinting at a possible explanation for why we haven't seen life miraculously appearing in our laboratories. That there is some subtle thing that has yet to happen that doesn't really happen often. In addition to this, the article uses that lottery language by saying, when life originates on a planet, whether Earth or a distant world, the newborn life forms may have to overcome incredible odds to come into existence. And a new equation lays out exactly how overwhelming those odds may be. And there's that word, odds. It says that the odds are overwhelming. Now, in all fairness, it doesn't say impossible, it just says overwhelming. Just like the odds are overwhelmingly against someone becoming a millionaire by winning the lottery. And what exactly are those odds? This is what they have to say when trying to calculate the chances of life coming into existence on its own. We don't know the mechanism whereby non-life turns into life, so we have no way of estimating the odds. It may be one in a trillion trillion. It's easy to imagine that. In which case, Earth life may be unique in the observable universe. Three words, we don't know. So really, the only honest answer anyone can currently give to the question of what came before the Big Bang is, we don't know. Much like what Neil deGrasse Tyson and Richard Dawkins have to say, they have no idea how life can come from non-life. Take a look for yourself. Also, we don't know what was around before the Big Bang. That's kind of fun. We have some ideas, maybe a multiverse, and with one of multiple bubbles of universes coming in and out of existence. So if they don't know, then you have to decide for yourself based on what you have observed in your life. Which brings us back to our two original questions. And these questions should determine whether or not we should at least be willing to entertain the idea of whether or not God exists. The questions were, in your experience, have you ever observed something coming from nothing? And the second question was, in your experience, have you ever observed or read of a scientific experiment where you have seen something living come from something that is not alive? The answer to both of those questions should be no. And for the leading atheists or agnostics that are influencing millions to abandon the idea of God, they have no idea either. They are hoping to one day find out how something can come from nothing or how life can come from non-life. And the question that we need to ask ourselves is what if they're wrong? What if something can't come from nothing? What if life can't come from non-life? What if there really is a God? And here's why you need to think about this question. Pretty much every religion, from Judaism to Christianity to Islam, or any other religion, has some form of afterlife, promising peace, safety, and happiness for eternity. The potential for this reality acted out in religious movies and non-religious movies, with the idea of an afterlife even making its way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like this one. So this means that if there is a God and an afterlife, then the risk is much more than the $2 to buy a lottery ticket. The risk is losing out on eternal life. And if Bill Nye says that we should base our decisions on the numbers for lottery tickets, 
then I think that we should base our decisions on the numbers for whether or not God exists, because the risk could possibly be eternal life. And this is exactly what we're going to do moving forward in this series. In this article that we looked at earlier, they presented an equation of the chances of life coming from non-life, and they said that it might be one in a trillion times a trillion. Those are not good odds. So I think that we all have some questions that we need to ask. In the spirit of making equations, I've also come up with an equation to help you decide if you should believe that God exists. And in the next episode, we will take a look at that equation. And the atheist astrophysicist Lawrence Krauss is going to help us with that equation. For Cinnamon Nicole, the chances of winning the lottery was 1 in 292 million. The reward was $1.5 billion. The risk was her life savings, and she made the choice to risk it all. Now what about the bigger question? What are the chances that one of the gods that are worshipped is real? What is the reward that these gods offer? We already saw that the reward is eternal life. And what is the risk of believing in one of these gods? In the next episode, we're going to put all of this together as we calculate the God equation. And if you at least find the chance of eternity intriguing, then I hope to see you again as we continue our search. And I hope the odds are in favor that you'll be back. Sorry. I couldn't help myself. Hope to see you again.